All right, if you're wondering how much you really need to earn in order to live in Florida, this video is gonna be for you. Me and my awesome bride here are going to break down our monthly budget. And I just wanna preface this and say first and foremost that we recognize this is not gonna be everybody's budget. There are people who make a lot more money than we do. <laughs> we are very aware of them. And there are people who definitely don't have the same opportunities that we do. We understand what we got down here, y'all. Our life was not what it is today. Is that fair to say? Totally fair to say. We came down on a wing and a prayer, risked everything, sold everything we own. I mean, how did we get rid of all of our stuff? I listed it all on Facebook Marketplace and it was like a rolling garage sale where people just kept picking up stuff and we had nothing when we moved out here. Literally, and uh, we moved from Metro Detroit over five and a half years ago to be six years this December. I remember walking into my house one day after work and someone was carrying out my bed frame. It was a very weird. <laughs> It was a very weird scenario, but in today's video, we get this question so often and I wanted to answer it. We're gonna break down our monthly budget. We're gonna talk about our housing expenses. We're gonna talk about utilities. What else are we gonna talk about? Food, because we have five mouths to feed and a dog. That's right. We're gonna talk about auto insurance and homeowners insurance because that is a hot topic here in Florida. And spoiler alert, you can get it and it's not the most <laughs> outrageous thing on the planet. It absolutely can be. You just have to be in the know and know how to approach it. So we're gonna cover those topics and many, many more. And we're gonna get into them right now. If we're meeting here for the first time, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm Kate Alcala. We're realtors with the True Living Group and we're on a mission to help you learn everything there is to know about living here in the greater Tampa Bay area. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a like. Share it with someone and be sure to subscribe to learn everything there is to know about living in Tampa Bay. And I wanted to break in here really quick and share why we decided to do this. There was a recent article that just came out by a company called Smart Assets where they did a survey of the largest metros in the United States and broke down what it actually costs to live there. The article from Smart Assets said you needed to earn $94,000 thousand dollars a year in order to make a living in the greater Tampa Bay area. And they base it off the 50, 30, 20 rule. 50% of your monthly income should be spent on housing, groceries, and transportation. Another 30% will go towards entertainment and hobbies. And that last 20% goes towards paying off debt and investments. And if you are self-employed or an entrepreneur like we are, you also have to factor 25% to 35% of your income for taxes. So just keep that in mind now. I wanna get into this video because Kate has a lot to share here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with housing. And the reason we're starting here is because if you're going to move to a new area, you need to be fully aware of what that's going to cost and how to approach it. In the interest of transparency, we've shared this before, but we rented for the first five years we lived here. I left a corporate job in 2017, and once you do that, it doesn't matter how much money you make as an entrepreneur, people don't wanna give you a mortgage. <laughs> and then two and a half years later, our personal economy was shut down when the world shut down. So we were affected, we had to make some shifts in plans. Now, one of the really nice things that we did, we were able to get a lease option, and this is a rarity. I wanna explain it briefly so you guys can understand. A lease option means that we were leasing the property with the option to buy. Okay, this isn't a rent to own situation. Those things are actually different. But what happened was, is we were able to put the property under control, meaning that we had control whether we were going to buy it or not exercise that option for five years. So we knew exactly what we paid. And then last year, we were on the fifth year, like <laughs> on the fifth year, the very last opportunity. Yes, we, we were able to make the purchase. So we wanted to share that with you guys in transparency. We started the video by saying, hey, look, this isn't going to look the same for everybody. Some people have really strong needs. We're blessed to work with clients who have the abilities to execute their dreams and they can do it in cash. And then we have other people who move to the area who are doing it on a shoestring, just like we did. And that was us too, y'all. Most people don't want to share this kind of stuff. We understand, but you know what? Florida has blessed blessed us beyond our wildest dreams. We could never imagine being in the same position that we are today, five and a half years ago. So we wanted to start with that. But what does it cost for housing? This is super important to know. Now, at the time of this recording, the median sales price for a home here in the greater Tampa Bay area is $439,000. Now, median and average are two different things. Median means it's the middle of the activity above and the middle activity below. <laughs> the average is the amount of properties that have sold versus the sales volume and that gets you to that number. Now what we see is most people buy on closer to the average and not closer to the median. 
just sharing that with you, right, in full transparency. But let's just go with the median for the sake of this conversation. I'm gonna show you a scenario here of what a new mortgage would cost you. Now, obviously, how much money you put down and the interest rates at the time you purchase are really going to affect this, just like they did for us, right? Because again, we closed our property last year, September 27th, 28th? 27th. Yeah, 27th, September 27th, and our mortgage interest rate at that point, which was not pretty, y'all, was 7.125 <laughs> it is a big one and we paid four hundred eighty three thousand dollars for this house okay. just sharing this in transparency with you guys and our mortgage payment with our insurance and our taxes our taxes were not homesteaded why is that important because when you homestead your taxes you actually get a bit of a discount and we were again we are renters who are purchasing so we're sharing this with you we don't expect our taxes to go down this year because appreciation has still occurred we're going to pay probably the same amount of taxes we paid last year if not more if not more so just keeping that in perspective but our scenario 483 7.125 we would fha and we our mortgage payment is 42 what 41.89 for $4,200 a month. And that is not cheap. And we're not on here flexing. We're just sharing what it takes to actually get this done. Now we live very, very close to the beach. We're so fortunate. Kate gave me some rules when we moved to Florida. <laughs> this is why we said when we were coming in on a shoestring. Like two the, rules. <laughs> two rules, two basic ones. Why don't you share with them what, what your requirements were for us to make this happen? And listen, when I say requirements, y'all, it's not like we were so bougie. We were thinking that like, this is the only way, but this was our goal. Yeah, this was the goal and this was the dream. And so for me, it was to be within 15 minutes from the beach where you move in the area that will differ completely, which we weren't completely aware of. And then to have a pool. Those were my two requirements. And we're blessed, man. I, like I said, we came right at the right time. We got the property under contract. Again, we knew the property was gonna increase in price every single year when we made the purchase. And to be quite honest with you, we made out because houses in our neighborhood sell anywhere between six fifty dollars and $700,000. So we already have equity built in the home. Again, hear our heart, y'all. Like we're just trying to be transparent and we're just sharing, again, what our experience is. There are people who spend way more and people that spend way less. You know, the average average down payment right now in the United States is right around 13%. So that will definitely impact your payment. As long as you're not living right on the beach and have crazy insurance prices, you're going to be paying that 3,700 to four grand ish at the current interest rates. Again, subject to change, of course. And that's another thing when you said insurance, we don't have to have flood insurance. And that isn't necessarily because we live where we are at from the beach, right? We have friends who live just as close to the beach, but because where they're at in elevation, they have flood insurance. So those are other things that you might wanna consider. Now I wanna get a little bit deeper into the everyday expenses. We're talking about groceries and automotive. Like those are the two things that kind of matter because you know, you're either buying gas or you're driving to the grocery store, you're doing some shopping for the family, whatever it is. And I'm so excited for you to share. I know that, listen, I wanna preframe this again, right? Like, because some people hear this and like, you guys are crazy. You spend so much money on groceries. Other people hear that, they're like, well, of course you're spending that much money. So perspective is everything y'all. And we're gonna ask you guys the question too. If you would be kind enough to share what your monthly budget is for groceries in the comments below, I think that would be awesome to help people understand what it costs. Let us know where you're watching too. That way people can kind of size up. Oh, I live in North Carolina also. Mm -hmm. This is what it, it costs me in Florida versus what it costs me in North Carolina because this is the stuff we didn't know. Yeah, and that's gonna change on your family size and the age of your kids. We have an 11 year old and the grocery bill for him is just going to continue to increase as his appetite continues. To right. Increase. So we have a, a household of five. We have three kids. The oldest is 11. The youngest is six. So you guys can kind of, you know, shake out the math from there. And then us. And, uh, you know, let's talk about how and a 90 pound dog who her food is 100 bucks a bag. That's right. There's usually three categories of, yep. of, of shoppers, right? You have people who are really, really budget conscious and they want the least expensive food products they can buy. And that's okay, mm -hmm. right? You have people that try to be somewhere in the middle where they like, maybe they're trying to get some organic vegetables, but you know, we'll take the cheapest proteins on the rack and that is also okay. And then you have other people who like to shop at places like Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, where things may not necessarily be the least expensive, but their approach like ours is we're in trying to invest into our health yeah right and we're so much so that we've sacrificed other material things at times to make sure we could get 
the highest quality foods in our body. I'm going to the grocery store. I primarily stay on the outside parameter of the grocery store. So you're talking meats, produce, dairy, eggs, seafood, things of that nature. So that's what I'm getting. We also do have a meat subscription. That's part of our thing. We subscribe to Butcher Box. We utilize that because the quality of the product is super important to me, especially, you know, for us, we're investing in our health and that takes away different healthcare expenses, in my opinion. So on a month to month basis, we're about $2,500 for our groceries. Shopping for me, I probably go to Costco twice a month because that's the reality. It is cheaper for me to go to Costco to buy produce than it is to go to the local grocery stores because we are a larger family. I shop at Sprouts, which depending on where you're at, that's gonna be one of your more intricate markets, not as much as like a Whole Foods, but similar to Fresh Time we had up north or Trader Joe's and then Publix because it's convenient and close. You know, you also have Winn-Dixie here in the mm -hmm. area. You have Walmart, of course. All these is around. Um, and we've talked to families that are 250 to $300 a week in, in groceries. So they say that that's pretty common for them, but usually they only have like one child. If you're an individual, obviously you're gonna spend a lot less y'all. Again, we have five mouths to feed plus a dog and the dog food is in that budget. We just, yeah. so you guys are aware. Dining out is different. This is individual. If you're somebody who goes out every single week, sometimes we'll go to, you know, the kitschy beach bar cause it's right around the corner and spend 35, 50 yeah. bucks. Other times we'll go to a really nice steakhouse and spend, you know, couple hundred or if not even three hundred dollars on a, a full evening we're talking about everything right we don't spend a whole lot of money on things like clothing we'll make adjustments accordingly based upon that but we just wanted to share that with you guys now when it comes to automotive this is something that people have a lot of questions about our insurance doubled our automotive insurance for the two cars that we own literally went from twenty five hundred dollars a year mm -hmm. to almost five thousand dollars a year it was it was crazy the adjustment that was made there now first three years we lived in florida our cars were hit all three years like literally and they <laughs> we were parked what a crazy thing we have not had that happen since knock on wood of course but those claims were on that insurance yeah. policy so that's been part of it too last year we did see a slight decrease right it was like 20 or 40 bucks or something yeah but so 20 bucks is it went down so i'm assuming one of those accidents fell off we'll see we renew again in august we're recording this in june the middle of june right now so we'll get a, a, a feel for that gasoline we're right in line with the national average we see somewhere between 320 and 330 a gallon my oil changes for the truck and the car are both like a hundred dollars if i go to take five or something mm -hmm. like that so it's nothing out of the ordinary in terms of automotive expenses. The next on the list would be utilities. We we're talking water, electricity, things of that nature. So we'll just dive right into water. For us, our water increased. It is about 130 bucks a month. Like I said, we have five kids. They take really long showers. There's a lot of laundry and we have a pool to fill up. Yeah. What we don't have that might be included in someone else's water bill is we don't have an irrigation system. Yeah, and sometimes people will use the pump in a well to, to do irrigation on their lawn. Sprinklers, guys, if you buy a new home that's already installed, that water comes from the county, so they've already got that taken care of. So this is something to keep in mind, but we definitely are spending more on water than we were before. But again, that was also almost six years ago. So yeah. we're trying to make adjustments too because we haven't lived in Michigan in almost six years. We didn't talk about homeowners insurance and taxes specifically when we gave you our number but like our homeowners insurance is $2,500 a year annually and we live less than seven minutes from the beach people hear that and like Juan you're lying and like we said before we're in a non-evac zone and in a non-flood zone so that probably took into consideration what our insurance rate was going to be yeah so electricity now that's the other piece coming from the midwest and other areas we had electricity and we had gas some places though that's one company some that's separate so for us it was just a switch our gas in the winter just that budget flooded into the summer ac unit so our duke bill on average is 350 bucks every single month on average now there are months come january i think we had 196 dollar bill but last september we had a 500 dollar bill Two. and the perspective of that we are a family of five our house is about 2100 square feet and a few other things to make mention there it's a really competitive market down here for lawn and pool so those things actually aren't tremendously expensive can you find expensive vendors for sure can you find people that are competitive also absolutely that's what we did we pay our lawn guy a hundred bucks every two months but honestly i think he just feels bad for us because we don't have a yard we have a Giant very old 
oak tree in the front yard that is completely uprooted. So really he's just weed whacking the front. So the pool for us is a hundred bucks a month. He comes every week. Can you do the pool yourself for less? Absolutely. Both of those are worthy investments if you you know don't have the time and you have the resources to do it. So that's something important to note. So we live in an unincorporated area in Pinellas County. So we're not part of the city municipality. So we get to outsource our trash to whatever company is available. There are like four or five different companies. So that also is competitive. So for us, I pay $34 a month for trash and recycling. That's one day of trash pickup and one day of recycling. There are other companies that will do two days of trash. And now you might be wondering if you're up north or somewhere cold, why do you want two days of trash? Because your trash sits outside and it roasts. That's right, because it gets <laughs> hot in Florida, y'all. So keep that in mind. And again, that's as real as yeah. we get right there. Now, when it comes to healthcare, this is going to be person specific. I'm speaking to things that I don't fully understand in this respect. So I'm just sharing with you guys. All I can do is share the statistics. And what it says is that healthcare on average is about 8% lower in the state of Florida. And I'll share my experience of why I think that happens, right? We move a lot of professionals from all over the country. And a lot of people in the medical industry have moved here in the last three and a half years with us as well. And what they have told us on average is that they make less money. Now, is it significantly less? I haven't heard that, but it is less, right? Employment is bountiful. It has been. People in that industry have not had a difficult time finding a job. The cost of living here is still lower, even though things are expensive. It, it's kind of strange how it works out. We don't have a state income tax. That's one of those things where if you don't make a bunch of money, then that doesn't really affect you a whole lot. But if you're a high income earner, not having to pay an income tax, especially if you move from areas that are super high tax, like California, New York, New Jersey, all of a sudden you can put an extra, you know, five, 10, 15, $20,000 in your pocket every year. That matters. Having no estate tax, meaning debt tax, right? Like that matters to a lot of people too. That's what has drawn people to Florida for, for generations, <laughs> literally. So I just wanted to share that experience with you. Also, the, one of the things we get asked all the time is daycare. And when I ask this question, cause we homeschool, right babe? Yeah, we homeschool, so I'm the daycare provider and I'm entirely underpaid. That's a fact, right? <laughs> but when we've asked other families who, you know, have to go to the office or don't have, you know, the benefit of working from home, you know, we've heard everything, right? From $500 a month, which is in my mind, I was like, that sounds ridiculously cheap, right? Yeah. To as much as $2,500 a month per person. Now, I think this is gonna be a lot like private school, if you, want, if you want the really, really good one, it's gonna cost you that much. But again, I only heard that number one time. On average, what I was hearing, it was somewhere between $750 and $1,000 per child to get in a registered daycare. That's what I was hearing when I pulled our, our clients just to get a handle on that because that's a question that people often ask, right? And I know we're gonna miss some here today, guys. This video would be two hours long if we went line by line just on our budget. And again, we don't pay for everything. We, you know, She brought up subscriptions. If you've got a Hulu and Netflix, a Disney, like all that's gonna matter. Our internet costs $100 a month, 105. And we got super fast internet. So it's fiber, one terabyte up and one terabyte down. It's crazy fast, which is awesome. <laughs> I know we're in the weeds, but it works. Internet's important. People. If you work from home, you need to know that no, you've got sure. good internet. So Tampa Bay has great internet. That's something to keep in perspective. Cars relatively are the same. We, you know, we came from Metro Detroit, the Motor City. We're paying essentially the same thing we'd be paying back there. So that's not been a concern. Kids sports. That's really unique, especially for me coming from a homeschool perspective, right? So our kids can play. I even have a friend, her son plays with a private school and he's been homeschooled his whole life. So sports can be budgeted just depending on what you do. But our kids swim for them. That's about 150 bucks a month. We've done basketball. We've done flag football. We've done soccer. I don't have perspective of what it is back home. I do know if you're playing travel, I know people who are spending, you know, 15 to $2,000 a month on travel weeks. We don't do that. If you guys have more questions, you wanna go deeper on this. If you're considering moving to the greater Tampa Bay area, in the description below, you'll see all of my contact information, including a link to my calendar where you can actually schedule that Zoom call. We'll jump on, go through Google Maps, talk about the greater Tampa Bay area, match your ideal lifestyle with those really good communities that are gonna make you feel like home. And I think we've had 190 Zoom calls with people just like you from YouTube who have decided to either relocate or are considering that. And we wanna make that an option for for you, of course. And I know some people are gonna watch this and you know, you're know you gonna have a hard time. There's gonna be judgment and I understand, but y'all, we can only be who we are. We're not 
ever coming from a position of better than, because again, trust me, I've been humbled enough in my life to know that people have way more than we do, but I also recognize that we've been blessed. I'm just gonna be transparent. If we would not have moved to Florida, our lifestyle would not be in the position it is today. No, and I can 100% attest to that. It just wouldn't, right? We moved for an opportunity cost and for a lifestyle choice. Like our lifestyle has increased. Not that where we're at, we're bad. We just want it different and this was our different. Yeah, and this has been such a blessing. People move here for the opportunity, right? Lifestyle and opportunity. And like I said, it's awarded us things we could never imagine before just from an experience perspective. And uh, we wanna say thank you guys for allowing us to share this with you. If you have questions, put them in the comment section down below. I don't have an assistant answering down there. And again, if you wanna schedule that Zoom call, <laughs> please feel free to do that. I'm happy to have that conversation. As always, go out and live that type of life. Mm -hmm.